the Eva Green Ushla, Ta Falcha Rifka, and you, the No Heart Special to Show in Ulskulden and Lee, Kundilimni in Aaron. Hello to everybody, and you are most welcome to our graduation ceremony here today at the University of Limerick on the banks of the River Shannon, Ireland. It is a wonderful day that we have planned for you, and I hope that you, your friends and your family get to enjoy this special time as the university awards you for your endeavour and achievement during the course of your studies with us here at the University of Limerick. Take this time to relax and enjoy and breathe in the significance of your achievement and note that this achievement is something that will always stay with you and that you will be able to reflect back on in years to come as you recount the journey of your time here at the University of Limerick, the times where you put in great effort to achieve your goals, to work with your lecturers and tutors and professional staff in order to realise the dreams that you came to us with on the first day of your journey. I hope that this special occasion for you, your family and your friends is all that it can be at this time and that you will go on to celebrate even when this ceremony is over. Kogardikas live Galair. Welcome to this UL online conferring ceremony. My role today is to say a few words on the significance of the academic robes worn by our academic staff and the graduates. The origins of academic attire date back to the 12th century when universities were beginning to emerge. At that time, the dress of the scholar, both student and teacher, was that of the monk. The academic gown can be traced back to the Council of Oxford in 1222, where the local bishop decreed that all clergy should wear a closed flowing gown. Both Oxford and Cambridge adopted this practice and continued it even when the clerical attire changed. In 1895, formal standards were agreed for American universities, which continue to this day. There, the colour used is indicative of the subject to which the degree pertains. This same uniformity does not apply here in Ireland and you will find it very difficult to identify a pattern or consistency. The hood was originally intended to serve as a cover for the tonsured head of the cleric. Caps came to be used later. You will notice that some academics wear caps while others do not, depending on the custom at the university at which the degree was conferred. In medieval times, the mace was a weapon of war and was a heavy staff or club made from metal and was originally used for breaking armour. In 13th century France, the mace was carried up by the monarch's bodyguard and began to acquire a ceremonial function as a symbol of secular power. At a live ceremony, parchments would be presented across the university mace to the graduating students by the president. Today, the UL mace will be placed on the table in front of our president to maintain its significance for use in acknowledging your academic achievement. I hope that you enjoy the ceremony and can celebrate your success with your families at home. Thank you. Graduands, welcome to your graduation ceremony. This online ceremony will last for approximately 45 minutes. I now call on the President, Professor Kirsten Mai, to officially start proceedings. Members of Governing Authority, members of the Academic Council, distinguished guests, parents, partners and families, graduates of the Class 2021, colleagues. A meeting of the University is hereby convened for the purpose of conferring academic awards. Exercising the power granted to the University of Limerick by Orachtus Aaron, I hereby confer degrees of the University on the graduates from the Faculty of Arts, Humanities and Social Sciences, the Chemie Business School, 
the Faculty of Education and Health Sciences and Interfaculty. I now call upon President of the University of Limerick to deliver her conferring address. Graduates, welcome. Dear Eve, I must begin by offering you the warmest of congratulations on completing this hugely important part of your learning journey and your life. Take a moment and reflect. Be proud for you have graduated at an immensely challenging time for the global community through COVID-19. Unprecedented, deadly and disruptive. These could be used to describe the last 15 months of life for you as students, for your parents, family and friends, for all of us. And while we are beginning to emerge on the other side, significant challenges posed by the impact of the coronavirus pandemic will be with us for years to come, but so will be opportunities to reflect, take stock and to do things differently. Speaking of emerging, today you are emerging from your journey through higher education. For some of you, your steps on this pathway of formal education will end here for now and you will enter or resume professional life with a deeper understanding of the world and yourself and with a valuable skill set. For others, you will stay on the path of formal learning, inquiry and knowledge exchange by taking your studies onwards. Nonetheless, and whatever path you have chosen, your success is hard-earned, highly valued and above all a credit to you and your support network. No one gets to graduate without a great deal of hard work, commitment and persistence and some degree of self-sacrifice along the way. None of you came to education without that basic desire to help others to fulfill their potential. By fulfilling your own potential here at UL, you are now equal to that task. Furthermore, and as graduates of 2021, you have put yourself at the heart of this most valuable human endeavor to empower others to empower themselves. Thank you tutors who work with such passion and commitment to educate the leaders and decision makers of tomorrow. Thank you parents, guardians and your family who stand behind you offering the support that cannot be measured. Thank your friends who stand by your side and for just being there. And thank yourself for having the perseverance to see it through to the end. You have shown resilience throughout your journey and at the most challenging time. Education has shown to be resilient also. However, we must learn from this pandemic and how change was foisted upon us. We must transform education and we must do it so that it meets the challenges of tomorrow. Any transformation or reimagining of university education has to go hand in glove with the reform of its funding model and an enhancement of investment into research infrastructure and talent, research capacity and capabilities. Since its foundation, UL has evolved from a regional institution for technical education into a national comprehensive university with growing European and global reach through excellence in research and education. We have you your alumni, who are the most sought after graduates that industry so desires and society needs. UL has consistently led on student employability in Ireland. Developing talent pipelines has supported the attraction of significant foreign direct investment into the region, the flourishing of multinational corporations and indigenous businesses. It is talent that underpins the vibrant regional innovation ecosystem. You are entering into that world as our ambassadors and we are so proud of you. Today, as we know, should be filled with the grandeur of the ceremony held on our stunning campus and there is no replacement for that. Your loss is our loss also, but we will come back again when it is safe to do so. Your academic achievements are worthy of the highest praise. Indeed, to achieve an award and meet the exacting standards of this institution is a success in itself but to do so with the backdrop of a global pandemic warrants the deepest admiration and richest congratulations. Normally, these special days would be celebrated with family and friends and supporters. But we have been forced to make sacrifices to protect ourselves, each other and the communities we serve. Never before have we seen the importance of community spirit, values and ironically togetherness. We have stood stronger together by staying apart 
And despite that anomaly, homes and classrooms, species virtual or in person, are reinforced as a seedbed of community values. I hope you will look back on your time at UL in Limerick and as part of a community of scholars. As I mentioned already, society is reopening and we are on the road to recovery. Our societal rejuvenation will be supported by you, bringing your skills, creativity and commitment into professional life and our communities. The importance of our sector has been highlighted by the COVID-19 crisis. Science and the relevance of educational engagement and global research activities is how we overcome adversities like this. To that end, we continue to stand firm against any dilution of educational standards to ensure that you can use your degree confidently and proudly in the knowledge that it is an unquestionable statement of ability, academic integrity and attainment. More than ever, we need that sense of community to be sustained and enhanced to help us address the many imbalances and societal challenges before us. The shared experience of being a graduate can give rise to future experiences where you get to enhance your life and the lives of others, where you make a difference. You can build on your own educational achievement to date and use this as a platform for lifelong learning and for shaping the world of tomorrow. University of Limerick has always placed educational access at the heart of our mission. It is our role to ensure that anyone who has a passion to learn should be enabled to do so. We cannot squander talent because we did not remove basic obstacles to learning. We will continue to make education accessible to all. We will continue in our pursuits of equality, diversion and inclusion. It is imperative that we continue to invest in enabling technologies to ensure, for example, that we can benefit from the academic contributions of a wide range of learners of different abilities. This ensures that our store of knowledge, which every student, every teacher and every researcher contributes to, gives us an ever deeper and wider understanding of the world we live in and everyone in it. Cherish the knowledge and truths you have gained. Keep adding to it and remember that you are now alumni of this institution. You are inextricably linked to University of Limerick and we urge you to stay in touch as you go out in the world for the next exciting chapter of your lives. To finish, I will offer you these. As we look forward to the rest of the year and 2022 with growing optimism, remember this. Patience, determination and hard work are key ingredients for success and you are now equipped with the mindset and the tools to achieve success, however we may define success, and overcome challenges. And while we face challenges, we need to be cognizant of our own self worth our ability to learn and our potential to grow. Savor the short-term success, but be mindful of your long-term fulfillment and all the while think carefully about your priorities. I will close by wishing you all the very best for your new adventures in the knowledge that when life does become uncertain, you will always find comfort and sustenance from the achievement of your graduation. Stand tall, be proud, relish the achievement and shine a light. Congratulations and well done. Thank you very much. It now gives me great pleasure to welcome the Minister for Further and Higher Education, Research, Innovation and Science, Mr. Simon Harris TD, to say some words of acknowledgement and congratulations to you. Hello there and thank you very much for allowing me to be here virtually as part of this really important day for you and your families. As a nation together, we have made an extraordinary effort over the course of the last year and more in response to the spread of COVID-19. Every aspect of our lives has come under pressure as we've worked together in response to what has been an unprecedented threat. All of you, every one of you, have shown tremendous dedication, courage and resilience in completing your studies under these difficult circumstances. You have pursued your ambition under the most trying conditions and limitations that this pandemic has caused. And today is my opportunity to congratulate you. I want to congratulate you as Minister for Further and Higher Education. I want to congratulate you as a former Minister for Health. And I want to congratulate you as a citizen of our country. All of you, no doubt, have grown and have matured. You've increased your knowledge, your skills. You've developed a deeper level of personal awareness and confidence. This journey that you today have completed has so many implications for your future self, the decisions you're going to make and the opportunities that life will bring as a result of your achievements. And with that, there will be a ripple effect 
where your achievements will also potentially impact on those closest to you, your family, your partners, your friends. Those of you who have taken this journey are going to inspire others to follow in your footsteps, to believe that they too can fulfil their potential and pursue a career in helping others and serving the public good. I would also at this juncture like to acknowledge the really hard work done by university staff, endeavouring to keep the show on the road, to continue to deliver tuition, to keep university services active and to continue to support the student body despite the pandemic. And I want to thank each and every one of them for their efforts. Finally, I'd like to say thank you to all of you. Thank you for persevering with your studies despite the trials that you have faced as a result of the pandemic. The fortitude with which you have borne the stresses of your studies and the pandemic is nothing less than inspirational. And I'm sure that your future careers will be equally inspirational. Thank you for your service. Thank you for stepping up. Thank you for your contribution to our national effort. And I wish you all the very best as you take this next step on your exciting journey. And as we take that step with you to make sure we don't just go back to normal, but that we build a better country as we emerge from this pandemic. Congratulations, Cohortigas. Thank you very much. I am now pleased to call on the Interim Executive Dean, Kemi Business School, Professor Finbar Murphy, to make his address of welcome. First, my heartiest congratulations to you on your achievements. I also want to congratulate your families, your parents, siblings, sons and daughters, because I know that in the same way it takes a village to raise a child, it takes a family to get a qualification. Academic procession, sombre music, photographs, cheering family members and caps being tossed in the air. That's how we celebrate the end of grades and exam stress in normal times. But the current global situation has made it impossible to celebrate together. This year has been tough on everyone, but my colleagues and I in the University of Limerick know only all too well how particularly hard this has been on you, our former students, and now our alumni. The graduation ceremony is important because from this day forward, you will have to rely not on grades or guidance from professors to tell you how you are and where you stand. You will have to rely instead on your inner compass. That compass honed by your family, friends, and by your experience here as a student, will allow you to chart your own course, question your assumptions, and when necessary, sail unafraid against strong winds. Stay close to your friends from college. You've just spent the last four years with them. That history is invaluable. Work colleagues, you can talk to them about work. Neighbours, you talk to them about the community. But friends from college, you can talk to them about everything and you can do nothing with them and still be happy. My friends from my college days mean the world to me. Without my college friends, I wouldn't know any Clare Hurling supporters or Leinster rugby fans. I wouldn't be the godfather of two kids. I would have a different best man on my wedding day and my holiday plans for next year would be very different. Keep being a friend to the friends you already have, but find new ones too. Keep in touch with the teachers with whom you became friends. We're always glad to hear from you. And find new teachers as well. Be a teacher yourself and help those who come to depend on your advice. Being helpful to others is a good way to make and keep friends. So, Go out there and be world beaters. Launch yourself on exciting journeys. Take your friends with you and make friends along the way. Speaking of journeys, don't forget to call home now and then. I used to write letters to my parents back in the day and later I would call them by phone. But technologies have changed, so make sure you Zoom, WhatsApp, FaceTime your family. Whatever technology you use, your parents and loved ones will appreciate it. Again, my warmest wishes from all at the University of Limerick, 
Congratulations to you and good luck in your next journey. I am pleased to call on the Executive Dean, Faculty of Arts, Humanities and Social Sciences, Professor Shane Kilcommons, to present the candidates for the conferring of undergraduate and taught postgraduate awards. President, the Academic Council of the University has been satisfied that the following candidates are worthy to be conferred undergraduate and taught postgraduate awards. Therefore, I present the candidates and request you to confer the awards on them. The Assistant Dean Academic Affairs, Dr. Scott Fitzsimons, will now call the candidates from this faculty in each award category and in alphabetical order. Bachelor of Arts, Joint Honours, Kevin Christopher Booth, Sarah Elizabeth Cunningham, Graduate Certificate, Serious Crime Investigation, Damien Patrick Coakley, Seamus Nolan, Angela Willis, Graduate Certificate, Technical Communication and E-Learning, Laura Rose McNamara, Graduate Diploma, Laws General, Rahi Pritam, Master of Laws General, Adam Summers. I am pleased to call on the Interim Executive Dean, Faculty of Business, Kemi Business School, Professor Finbar Murphy, to present the candidates for the conferring of undergraduate and taught postgraduate awards. President, the Academic Council of the University has been satisfied that the following candidates are worthy to be conferred with undergraduate and taught postgraduate awards. Therefore, we present the candidates and request you confer the awards on them. The Assistant Dean Academic Affairs, Kemi Business School, Dr. Antoinette Flynn, will now call the candidates from this faculty in each award category and in alphabetical order. Certificate in Management, Monica Clancy, Stephen Culligan, Neov Hanley, Eileen Hennessy, Mairead Keane Mulvihill, Idel Lines, Sandra Mannix, Noel McInerney, Michelle Mead O'Sullivan, Tracy Maloney, Aideen O'Callaghan, William Quirk, Mary Roach, Linda Tucker. Graduate Diploma in Financial Services. John Reddington. Graduate Diploma in International Management and Global Business. Manoush Promise Vasrani. Saurabh Santush Trapati. Graduate Diploma in Project Management. Ratul Halder. Vishak Sutan Palut. Meenul Krishna K. Vishvakarma. Specialist Diploma in Marketing Management. Daniel Boyce. David Roderick. Orla. Cassidy O'Regan, Ursula Collins, Damien Considine, Michael Dwyer, Aaron Fenton, Benjamin Finnan, John Fitzgerald Kelly, Rosalie Gomez, Carmel Healy, Sherry Harewood, Lorna Horgan, Cody Kelly, Hilary Kennedy, Jennifer Mary Kissan, 
Nicholas Lorenzi, Fiona Ann Mackey, Jesse Murphy, Aoife O'Shocknessy, Nessa O'Hanlon, Aoife O'Regan, Tony Sheridan, Brona Sinnott, Laura Winston. I am pleased to call on the Executive Dean, Faculty of Education and Health Sciences, Professor Rachel Massetfi, to present the candidates for the conferring of undergraduate and taught postgraduate awards. President, the Academic Council of the University has been satisfied that the following candidates are worthy to be conferred undergraduate and taught postgraduate awards. Therefore, I present the candidates and request you to confer the awards on them. The Assistant Dean Academic Affairs, Faculty of Education and Health Sciences, Dr. Raymond Lynch, will now call the candidates from this faculty in each award category and in alphabetical order. Bachelor of Science in Health Sciences, Laurel Baker. Bachelor of Science in Nursing, Intellectual Disability. Emily Horgan, Graduate Diploma in Advanced Healthcare Practice, Wasim Mustafa, Shitij Sharma, Graduate Diploma in Nursing, Dementia Care, Shiji Rachel Thomas, Sherry Tekanat Chako, Graduate Diploma in Nursing, Psychosocial Interventions in Mental Healthcare, Michael Scanlon, Denise Tierney. Higher Diploma in Midwifery. Samantha Dillon. Florence Devan. Anne-Marie Hayes. Sarah Lennon. Immaculada Lopez Morales. Mary McCormack. Siobhan O'Grady. Tammy Parker. Michelle Quirk. Maria Friende. Master of Science in Mental Skills and Mental Health in Sport and Exercise. Elaine Cahill. Paul Flanagan. Neil Graney. Master of Science in Sport, Exercise and Performance Psychology. Haley Banahan. Aaron Byrne. Oshin Foley. Maxime Hagen, Edward Hanlon, Tim Marin. Master of Science in Sports Performance, Tiesa Graziella, Araju de Silva, Goez de Malo. Thomas Brady, Carol Dillon, Podrick Inright, Michael Gordon, Iran Zhao, Tomas Lane, Robert Lewis, Daliang Li, Yanjin Li, Stuart Logier, Owen McGrath, Leo Morrison, Aaron O'Connor, Oscar O'Dwyer, Brian Spring, Molly Sullivan, Jia Wei Zhao, The Executive Dean of Graduate and Professional Studies, Professor Anne Ledwith, will present the candidate for the award of a doctoral degree by research and thesis. President, the Academic Council of the University has been satisfied that the following candidate is worthy to be awarded a doctoral degree by research and thesis. Therefore, I present the candidate and request you to confer the award on her. The doctoral candidate has successfully undertaken a programme of study and research involving the submission of a thesis and its examination by internal and external examiners. Janine O'Gorman. The title of Janine's thesis is Evaluating Mental Health First Aid Training in Ireland, a study of participants' post-training experience and helping behaviour. 
Janine's supervisors are Dr. Barry Coughlin and Dr. Jennifer McMahon. I am pleased to call on the Executive Dean, Faculty of Arts, Humanities and Social Sciences, Professor Shane Kilcommons, to present the candidates for the conferring of interfaculty, undergraduate and postgraduate taught awards. President, the Academic Council of the University has been satisfied that the following candidates are worthy to be conferred undergraduate and taught postgraduate awards. Therefore, I present the candidates and request you to confer the awards on them. Bachelor of Arts, Economics and Sociology, Daniel Nix. Graduate Certificate, Teaching, Learning and Scholarship, Miriam Amigo Benevent, Mairead Ann Hussey, Neve Lanahan. I now call upon Thomas Brady to say a few words to his peers in the graduating class of 2021. Good afternoon everyone. My name is Tom Brady and I'm a student of the Sports Performance Masterclass for 2020-2021. I'm very honoured and privileged to have been asked to address our graduating class today. This is an important milestone for us and one that I'm happy to share with you guys. So firstly, I would like to say congratulations to everyone. We got there in the end and we should be immensely proud. To say it's been a crazy year or so since we first arrived in UL in January of last year is an understatement. None of us on the evening we were all asked to leave the campus in March could have foreseen the way things would have turned out. When I was asked to write this speech, I had to think back to what seems like a lifetime ago. I remember my first few days of the course, and I must admit I was very nervous not knowing anyone in the course. This gave me the bright idea of thinking, what if I nominated myself to be the guy who sets up the WhatsApp group? That it would be a good way of introducing myself to everyone and that I would remember everyone's name and so on. So if I had known this would automatically have made me the number one candidate to be the class rep for the year, I might have done differently. When nominated by the class, I quickly declined in the hope that someone else would step up and take the role, but to no avail. And with that, I unwillingly accepted thinking, oh, what have I got myself in for? I thought I was going to be out of my depth and it would be a disaster, but it was quickly calmed by everyone in the course who were so nice and forthcoming. As the year progressed, I had to quickly adapt to going largely online and having to figure out everything for the class. And although stressful at times, I look back on it all with fondness, as it allowed me to get to know each and every one of you in the course very well. And I've made bonds and friendships that will last forever. I certainly tried my best to represent the class as best as I could and could not have done it without you, the help of all you guys. Although we only had a short time on campus and large parts of our course we missed out on, I feel we have gained great knowledge over the duration of the course. This knowledge is something that will set us apart from other people in the field of sports performance, so be sure to use it to your advantage. As we all head into the field, it is important we use the knowledge and connections we have made in the course to help one another, as we all know how difficult it can be to succeed in such a saturated market. Some of us have found what we want to do, and others are still looking, but that is okay. Every end has a new beginning. Today marks the start of the new beginning and one we should embrace. To conclude, I've gained so much from my experience throughout the Sports Performance Masters course, and I'm grateful for the staff and tutors we have came across on our time on the course. Personally, I'd like to thank my parents, my sister Emma, and my girlfriend Louise for putting up with me and getting me through the last year. Special mention, I feel, should go to our course coordinator, Mark Lyons, who worked extremely hard for us as a group. Mark had the exceptionally difficult task of navigating us through the year under extenuating circumstances. He was constantly available and helpful no matter how much I bombarded him with emails on behalf of the class. Mark made everything much easier for our group and for that we are extremely grateful. Finally, I want to speak to you, you guys, the graduating class of 2021. Although it was one of the strangest years of our lives, I'm grateful to have spent it with you guys. We came in with different levels of knowledge and backgrounds and we leave now as the sports performance graduating class of 2021, a bond that no one can take from us. So graduating class of 2021, congratulations to everyone once again. Enjoy your celebrations today with your families and loved ones wherever you are in the world. We deserve it after all our work. Hopefully in the not so distant future, we can all meet up again and celebrate in person. Thank you all very much. 
I'll leave you now, as I'm sure most of you are excited to transcribe my speech. But before I go, I will leave you with a phrase a wise man by the name of Jarvis once told me. Lightweight, baby. Thank you. Cohortigus Agus Goma, Gorof Mila Mahogat. Thank you.